You are now listening to The G-Spot with your host, Creole GQ. Many of you know this man by Andre Taylor, but all of you know him by another name. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to go right back into the show with my very first guest on a totally independent G-Spot podcast show, the one and only Gordis Drake. Stay tuned. You are not going to want to miss this show. We will be right back. Welcome to the G-Spot. I am your host, Creole GQ, and with me co-hosting this evening is Karma Sutra. Welcome to hey, the show, Karma. Karma. I'm, uh, thank you, G. I'm glad to be here, finally. You have to bear with me. I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm sucking on a peppermint as I'm talking. I'm trying to get my voice ready. <laughs> and I want to introduce our guest. We have a very special guest today. We have Gorgeous Dre on the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. All right. <laughs> and he is gorgeous, ladies. Let, let me just make that clear. <laughs> oh, appreciate that. Thank you, honey. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen her when I when I sent her the link to your MySpace page. I mean, she was kind of speechless for about five minutes, but uh, I'm flattered yeah, for real. That was ten minutes. Cause it took me that long to get back to you, bro. Uh, it, was, it, it, it seemed that long. <laughs> it always feels good when you know somebody appreciates you, for real. That's I was awesome. stuck on the page. <laughs> and that's what you want. You want somebody to be stuck on the page. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I was stuck. That that's that's where I was. Well, I Almost went on your page. I went on your page. So coming from you, I, I that's, a, that's a fine compliment. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you. Then thank you. But please remember that was that, those pictures were a couple of years ago. I'm trying to get back to where I was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm working oh, on it. It's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. That's awesome. Well, I'm sure a lot of our guests and listeners are uh, tuning in right now because they have different reasons. Uh, and to kind of clear up some uh, misconceptions and, and myths, I'm going to go ahead and ask this first question. Okay. Get back to your father. He said to you at one time, you've got to be a man before anything. Right. Can you explain to the young listeners out there, especially the young men, what he meant by that? Well, what my father meant by that is that there's a lot of things in life that are going to challenge you but that the man can never be compromised at no time and uh, being self-contained and being who you are. Uh, you got to be a man uh, before you anything. That applies across the board. Before you're an attorney, before you're a politician, before you're a pimp, before you're a doctor. There are some rules about manship that should never ever be compromised. And he was telling me that. Don't get too caught up in uh, you know the life of the pimping to the point that you compromise being a man always have integrity always stand for something principal that's bigger than you you know that's a part of what he says and, and then also you know uh, reiterating that to me all my life and let me understand that these were the things that make you a giant you know what I'm saying in whatever you do so uh, I, I listened to my father and when I had the opportunity to prove that I was indeed this man that he told me I should be, I took the opportunity. I did not compromise the man when I was facing life. I didn't tell on anybody. I went all the way to trial. I didn't bow underneath the pressure or underneath the heat. I stayed true to who I said I was. That's what makes you a man. And let me elaborate on that also a little bit. There are so many people that go around and talk about, I'm a man, I'm a man, but no one has ever defined what a man is. And I can tell you this, a woman cannot define what a man is. She can only agree to what a man is, but she cannot define what a man is. A man is this, and I want you to really listen because no one has defined it, but I'm going to define it tonight. You know, a lot of times when you meet a girl, most in most cases, a guy puts on his best front. He is, you know, he is all this, he is all that, he would never do this, and he would do this. He tells the woman all the best points about him, all the things that he's so good at and he would never do. He puts on his best face. And around three months down the line, he begins to dissipate and fold from what he said he was. And six months down the line after that, he be, he's totally the opposite of what he says he was from the beginning. So with this gives her the right to begin to despise him. This, this is the problem in relationships that a lot of men don't understand. Well, the problem is, is when you begin to dissipate from who you said you told her you were, 
then you give her the righteous right to despise you, to be angry with you, and to have an attitude against you because you deviated from who you said you were. That's natural. Now the man is an individual that when he says, I am this, that, and the other, he never ever changes. See, that is the ultimate security a woman wants. She don't really care about no money. If a woman could say this about her man, if she could say there's a whole bunch of things, girl, I don't know, but one thing I do know is that this man I got, he ain't gonna change on me. She'll be with that man on a bus stop. She'll be with him without a car. All that money don't mean nothing. That's the security. She the problem is, is that the men change. They falter. They begin to fall and use excuses of if why I they're could. falling. I'm doing a holy dance over here, Dre. <laughs> Let the church say amen. <laughs> the, the, I'm literally doing a holy dance over here. Because everything that you're saying is, is, is so true. And the young men are missing this. Yes. You know what I'm saying? They need to hear that. And nobody is telling them that. Yes. Oh, I'm doing a holy dance over here. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it's true. The church, let the church say amen. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's true, you know. Yeah. So uh, this is this is this is the the final definition of being a man. When you go out there and you tell people you a man, see, you won't have to say that. See, a woman can't define you being a man, but she can agree to you being a man when she, you have stayed consistent to who you said you were. Then when you say I'm a man, she say yes, he is. God damn it. <laughs> she, <laughs> that's right, that's you know, right. and this is not a convenient thing. This is nothing that's convenient to be. I'm not a man because it's convenient. And a lot of cases is very inconveniencing to be that way. But it's by choice I be the man. This is what makes the man beautiful. Because he's this way despite whether it's convenience, whether he's inconvenienced, this don't matter to him. It's the principle of manship that matters most. And let me give you a little bit more. As the story goes with Adam and Eve, you know, the Adam, uh, Eve bit the apple, then she brought it to Adam and he bit the apple. Now when God came down and he began to speak to Adam and Eve, he came and he spoke to Adam. He didn't call Eve, he's Adam. And he asked Adam because Adam had headship. That doesn't mean that he was better than her, that's just the order that God had placed it in. So he had headship. So when God asks Adam, what happened, Adam? You know what happened to Adam? Adam said, Lord, uh, it was the woman you gave me. The moment Adam said it was the woman you gave me, he lost headship. Headship means being accountable for what God has placed you over. That's headship. Even if the person under you have done a wrong. For instance, a general can be in the army and there could be a sergeant or, or a lieutenant and the lieutenant has people underneath him that have done some foul things in the battlefield. The general don't go to the guys who done the bad things. They go to the lieutenant and say, what the hell is going on? If the lieutenant says it was the men, they'll take that lieutenant from, from his position because he doesn't know the responsibility of rule, of headship. He needs to get out of that damn position. You take responsibility. You say, that's on me. That's on me. I'll have it. I'll take care of it. That's my bad. Even though his troop did some things, he takes full responsibility for what he's over. That is not happening in the man today. He says, when you get in an argument or your relationship is about to end, the man tells the woman, if you just would have did such and such, I would have did this and this. Well, see, he's lost headship. That's why he's saying that. What he should say to her is, you know what, baby? Irregardless of whether she did something right or wrong, he take full responsibility of his headship, and that shit will just naturally fall in order. But the fact that he does not take full responsibility of his headship, nothing is in order. And that's the state of men. Adam, where are you? <laughs>